Welcome back. The titans of the technology industry looking to make their move into health care has been happening for a couple of years now. The $2.7 trillion market already seeing the impact of technology and artificial intelligence with companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, so many others launching new ventures. Joining us right now is the CEO of Rome Analytics, Alex Turkeltaub. Rome Analytics is an industry leader that created the first machine learning platform designed for healthcare. Alex, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It you. feels like healthcare <clears throat> is probably one of those industries that is most poised to benefit from machine learning uh, as we're living longer. I think, look, absolutely. You've got a four and a half trillion dollar industry that is by far the most impactful, industry, impactful industry in this country in the world in terms of population is getting older, we're living longer, the amount of costs associated with it, and obviously the emotional cost of anyone interacting with the healthcare system. At the same time, it's a system that's defined by an enormous amount of profitability and enormous technology laggardom, if you could say that. So they're incredibly far behind and there's lots and lots of things they can do that are extremely interesting, both around drug development, about figuring out who those drugs are for, and ultimately about, as we were chatting before we came online, but how are those drugs going to be aligned to value? How do we make sure we pay for things that actually work for patients? But, but I mean, now you have a lot of competition, right? I mean, at this point, I mean, I remember 10 years ago, Qualcomm was investing in a clinical trial that you put a, a semiconductor chip in your bloodstream and your phone can call you up and say, go to the doctor, your arteries are clogged, you're gonna have a heart attack. I mean, that was 10 years ago. Yep. So today, the, isn't, the, crowd, isn't the, the, the space much more crowded? So it's crowded, but it's crowded in my view in very uninteresting ways. There's basically two companies trying to do what we're doing and what we do at, at its core is very simple there's vast amounts of information that are generated by the healthcare system none of that information talks to each other a good chunk of that information is text data so-called unstructured data and so just integrating that data so you can make decisions in an informed way whether you're developing new drugs whether you're figuring out who those drugs are for again whether you're trying to figure out how to put a patient on a pathway that'll get them healthy all of that is very difficult and the only companies that are doing this honestly are us and IBM Watson and if you look at Watson. I don't want to put words in other people's mouths, but you've seen the disaster at MD Anderson where they were booted out of that hospital system. You see a number of our clients, all of whom have worked with Watson, and the issue is the platform simply does not work. And so where Rome came in, and we've been around only for a few years, is we've developed a proprietary system built mostly by uh, our team, all of it out of Stanford, to how do we think about those problems so we don't have to provide consulting services and go manually integrate your data, but do it in a scalable way. So lots of players, but not a lot of people doing interesting things. Things. In layman's terms, how does this impact the patient's experience? Very, very simply, in two ways. Number one, many more drugs will be developed that are targeted and precise for the types of disease that patients have. In a drug that actually works, only one in four patients will respond to that drug, which means in 75% of cases, you're getting a drug that's a complete waste and may have harmful side effects without any benefit to you. Number two, for most Americans who are suffering from chronic diseases, diabetes, various cardiology problems, etc., the key question is not just how to manage that primary disease, but the entirety of what you have, what are called comorbidities. And so using something like Rome's platform, you get a much higher standard of care, you get to a much healthier outcome, and we as a country avoid going bankrupt. Alex, who are your customers then? Hospital systems, but it also sounds like the pharmaceutical companies, the insurance companies, that it is that you really do you need to be across the entire healthcare spectrum from doctor to hospital to insure to drug companies. So that's a great question. So we've started at the other end. Our first set of customers are pharmaceutical companies and medical devices companies. Mm -hmm. They make some of the most impactful decisions. They're also by far the biggest investors in new technology. I think insurance companies are very interesting customers for us as are providers in hospitals. The one thing we don't do is try to actually change that patient-doctor interaction. So how does that doctor have that first conversation with a patient? That to me will probably change over time, but there's so many cultural things ingrained in my experience in meeting a doctor, sharing what I'm having, and having Having them give me a diagnosis. I know what you're talking about, though. You're talking about which questions a doctor might ask a patient upon the initial visit, that that could change over time to provide better data to the companies that really make the life changing and saving decisions, like the drug companies. I would even say one step further, probably 10 to 15 years down the road, the diagnostics will be so good, whether from your blood work or other things, or from your wearables, which you may be buying from Apple or Android, etc., that your doctor interaction will be a lot less important. We'll know a lot more about what's happening with you and be able to send you directly to a specialist. But again, that's probably our children's experience with doctors, not ours. Wow, why do you say this? You don't think the Watson platform works? I don't. 
I don't. And uh, again, there, there's three thing, three problems with it. I think problem number one is, as I said earlier, the key challenge in healthcare is how do I integrate vast amounts of data, and make it talk to each other. To do that, you have to build a system that understands that even within one hospital, even under one health record system, there'll be multiple variations that need to be integrated. And I think what IBM's mostly done is sent a bunch of consulting muscle to try to integrate that data. The moment the underlying data structure changes, there's problems. But the other thing, and not to sound too uh, Pollyannish about Silicon Valley, I think a company of our size just moves faster and is much more focused on how do we figure out a practical solution rather than a large behemoth for whom anything less than a few billion in revenue makes no sense given the problems they're having. What is your size? So currently we have about 32 people, of whom 27 are data scientists and engineers. So it's a very product-focused organization. We've raised a bunch of money from terrific investors, Stanford University, a venture capital firm founded by a co-founder of Palantir, uh, Rupert Murdoch, who's obviously the owner of this network, and a number of others. And uh, we are hiring very aggressively and hope to double that size as soon as we find the engineers. Do you, do you have any thoughts on what's going on in terms of retail and pharmacy? I mean, you've got Amazon now looking for pharmaceutical licenses. You've got CD. Yes, wanting to acquire Aetna. Connect the dots for us. Absolutely. So this is by far the most positive development you could see for patients, particularly with Amazon coming into the space. If you look at drug prices, it is uh, it looks a lot like the food industry about 150 years ago. You had the small farmers, then you had a local distributor. He sold it to another distributor. By the time you got your groceries from your local, your local store, you paid five times more than what the food should actually cost. With Amazon coming in, what you're likely to have is much more transparency and eventually an integrated experience where Alexa will hear your problems, they'll probably send you directly to a doctor who can then pick up the phone or do a video call with you and directly integrate with drug prices. And Apple, and hopefully they'll do this as well, if you can integrate your wearables with your doctor experience, then there's a lot more data inputs for a company like Rome. Because instead of just getting a diagnosis the one time you came into the doctor, what we'll have is a constant sense of what's happening to you. Are you complying with your, with your regimen after you had surgery? Are you doing your exercise? Are you eating correctly? All of that data for us is music to our ears because that gives us more things we can use to predict what's happening. Really fascinating stuff. I'm sorry, I like the idea of sitting news. around telling Alexa your problems, though. Yeah. But, so, hey, I'm just a medical problems. Here, Alexa. <laughs> it'll save so, your marriage. We're we'll worried sure. about the Middle East. And, it will save your marriage. Yeah. I'm not sure about the Middle East and psychotherapy, but in terms of just saying, Alexa, my eye hurts and I'd like to speak to a doctor, that may save you time. That is brilliant. Alex, great to have you on the program today. Thank you very much. Thank very nice you. Being here. We'll be watching the developments. Alex Turkletaub, uh, there, Rome Analytics. We'll